Hello everybody and welcome to the video presentation of my model which is a Volvo F12 chassis with a Norba RL35 body mounted on it. I get a lot of questions uh, of where I got the stuff, uh, where, I can, where you can buy it and uh, also how it is made and whether or not it's for sale, which it is not. And uh, so I thought I would make a short video explaining a little bit about the truck, where I got the parts and how it is made. So, and I will also uh, add in the description, uh, hopefully links to the websites where you can get the stuff. Otherwise I will just uh, tell you the names of the firms, which are mostly German, by the way. So, I think I will start with the cab. And the cab is a Volvo F12 from the German firm Vedico. Unfortunately, this cab is discontinued, so if you want to find it, you will have to buy it in second hand. And also, this cab is a sleeper cab from the beginning, which is not what I wanted for my model, since it's very uncommon for garbage trucks to have sleeper cabs. So, I had to shorten it down. And doing that was made by water cutting, and uh, I cut the side panels and the roof. And uh, then I welded them together partially and glued the rest and then I painted them. So I don't really recommend anybody doing this because the material, the, the casting aluminium wasn't really good to weld in. So it's not that sturdy actually. So if you want to buy a short cab to build this kind of truck, I would recommend you to buy the Bruder Arox. Or perhaps the Arox or the Man TGA from the firm Scale Art. And here you have a little bit of the interior, which is partially bought and partially made by myself. So, next. Uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about is the drive unit of the truck. And the main motor is made by a German firm called Servonaut, and the rear axles are made by a firm called Rust. I don't really know if Rust is around anymore, so you will probably have to find your rear axles somewhere else. Anyways, it looks a little bit like this. And next up, I'm going to talk a little bit about the hydraulics, and I will start with the pump. Uh, the pump is clearly seen here. Uh, it's usually hidden by a panel, but now it's here, right in the open. So, it's a pump that runs at 15 bars, and it's ba made by the German firm Leimbach Modellbau. And uh, it also has a built-in uh, overpressure relief valve, which is really useful when you're going to uh, use a hydraulic system to prevent damage. So, and to show you the valve packages, I will have to tilt the cab forward because they are hidden within the body. And since the inside is painted matte black, it will be a little bit hard to see it, but I will see what I can do. Here they are, with the servos and everything. Here you can also see the ejector panel, uh, although a little bit blurry. Well, there it is. Oh, by the way, there's also a filter on the hydraulics, which is placed there. So, and next up, I'm going to talk a little bit about the electronics of the truck. And I'm beginning with the transmitter, which, which is a Futaba FC16 Boaton truck, which is here. Uh, I have added two proportional channels, the ones seen here in the middle, and there are also two switching channels right here. And uh, it has also been converted to 2.4 GHz uh, with components from FR Sky. And uh, you can see the receiver in here. 
and uh, this module you see here, this big chunk of, well, <laughs> PCB, uh, is the board that controls the hydraulic pump, which turns it on and off. And one of the switch channels on the transmitter is used for this. And here you can almost see the switches that turns the truck on and off. And right here under the cab, uh, you have the main electronic, uh, well, connection point. And as you can see, there are a lot of cables. And uh, most of them are used for powering the functions, and a lot of them are for all the lighting functions in the truck. Also, you can see this small controller here called Thor 4, uh, which is called, made by, oh, what's their name? CTI, I think, also a German firm. And uh, that one controls the wire winch at the rear of the truck. And right here, you can see the main drive uh, regulator, or what's called speed controller. And it's a Servonaut S22. And the reason for its placement is because once before it was situ situated down here, but it became way too hot and the first one I had actually broke down. So I had to reposition it. And next we will continue on to the bodywork. And this is where I have made most of it myself. Uh, the body is made by a combination of water cutting and uh, CNC milling, ordinary milling, uh, and well, it's really a lot of work to do this kind of stuff. And um, I just want everybody to be sure what they're go getting themselves into before starting up a project like this. I mean, this takes hundreds of hours to make. So. If you look at these parts alone, up here, the arches holding the, the hydraulic hoses, they took an entire weekend to make by hand. And that's also why when somebody asks uh, what it would be worth if I was to sell it, which of course I wouldn't, but that's why the price would be very high. So, the side panels here are made from uh, plexiglass, or acrylic glass, I think it's called. And um, these, uh, this is really a unique feature of the Norba RL35, which made it a lot easier to build than if you would have the, the vertical pillars on the side, especially in this scale, since the problem is to screw them there. I mean, most screws are simply too big. And back here... This is the part that I've showed in many videos, the rear tailgate, uh, where you can also see the wire winch, which I uh, talked a little bit about earlier, since it was controlled by the 4.4 uh, speed controller. And you also see some of the cylinders. Uh, these are the cylinders powering the tailgate. Uh, they are the smallest cylinder cylinders from Leinbach. Uh, I think they are 70 millimeter in piston diameter. And the cylinders in the back here, controlling the packer panel and the slide panel, are 16, no, sorry, 12 millimeter uh, Leinbach cylinders. And uh, they produce a power of about 30 kilograms uh, when the plate is traveling downwards, which is actually the strongest, uh, well, the strongest situation the packer uh, is in. So, and... The tailgate here is made by sheet metal, uh, steel one millimeter plate, and uh, also it is made the side the side in reinforcement panels are made by five millimeter aluminium plate, which was cut out with water, and then I milled them manually uh, to get them to look like the original. So and uh, also the rear hopper rave here is made by 10 millimeter aluminium, also milled manually, <laughs> just like many other things here. And uh, the packer plate I think is 12 millimeter aluminium, and the slide plate is from a three millimeter aluminium sheet and 10 millimeter uh, aluminium plate. So and. 
The main body panel sides are made from 3mm aluminium plate and that's the same as the roof and the floor of the body. And the uh, V-ejector panel, which can almost be shown here again, let's try to get a little bit better picture of it, is made from 1mm uh, steel plate and from 6mm aluminium beams. So, that was it for this time. Uh, if you have any more questions, if it is anything else you want to see or anything else you want to have described, I would happily do a video showing you that if it is possible. Uh, otherwise, I will, as I said, I will place the information in the description of the video. And um, hopefully that will be all you need. And I really hope to see other people build projects like this. Because I really enjoy watching other people being creative. So good luck out there. Bye.